Okay, so next a natural thing to natural question to ask is what is the input impedance or input resistance? I mean basically what is the resistance seen from here? So Z in or R in. Um, there's nothing new here. So I know how what to how to deal with this kind of a circuit or how to deal with this kind of resistance. I know that looking into the base, I'm gonna see R pi plus whatever resistance that I have at the base, in this case I don't have any, plus whatever I have at the emitter times beta plus one. So beta plus one times RE. So that's pretty much it. So this is my RN. No more discussions, nothing else, right? Uh, one interesting thing that I can actually say here is that I didn't really need to write all of those uh, equations in the last slide. I could have found the gain much easier using this trick that I just learned. Uh, so I could have said that if this is my V in, I've learned that I can bring any resistor in the emitter to the base and make it in series with the base resistors if I multiply it by beta plus one. Okay, now where is my V out? Here's my V out. Now, what is V out over V in? It's a resistive divider. It's going to be beta plus one times RE over beta plus one times RE plus R pi. So none of the stuff that we did, we did uh, do la in the last slide was really necessary. We could have actually found this using the trick that um, I can always take a resistor in the emitter, multiply it by beta plus one and put it in series with the stuff in the base. And then, well, the trick is also has the other side. I can take any resistor in the base, divide it by beta plus one and put it in series with the resistors in the emitter, okay? So this is a very, very useful trick that you can only use it with bipolar transistors. So in chapter six and seven, we're gonna talk about MOSFET transistors. And over there, you, can, you don't have such a relationship. But here you do have it and try to use it that anytime that you're analyzing any kind of re anything related to the resistors and resistance, uh, you can always take stuff from emitter to the base and you can always take stuff from base to the emitter you, all you need to do is to either multiply by beta plus one or divide by beta plus one, okay? Okay, how about the output impedance? Um, let's do whatever we do with the rest of the circuits, whatever we have done up to now. Uh, we connected the input to ground, we shorted the input, and we applied this, let's say, V-test, I-test thingy here, right? We don't really need to do KVLs and KCLs anymore. We can actually see it. Like we have been like practicing so much that we can like I'm hoping that all of you can see it. So looking into here, looking down, I'm just gonna see RE. Looking up, I'm gonna see one over GM plus whatever is in the base divided by beta plus one. And these two are gonna be in uh, are in parallel with each other. Therefore, my R out is just gonna be RE in parallel with one over GM plus RS divided by beta plus one. Okay, so this RS is the resistor in the base. Why did we call it RS? Because it's like the source resistance, the source that we just turned off, right? But it doesn't matter what is the name. Uh, what matters is that it's in the base, so we're just gonna divide by beta plus one. Uh, and we have one over GM, and then th those are in parallel with whatever I'm looking, whatever, whatever resistance I see looking down, which is RE, okay? so. The reason I'm doing all these stuff is not to, like none of the slides that I've done, uh, the purpose of the slide is never uh, to, to, to give you some expressions to remember. I, the last thing I want you guys to do is to actually remember these expressions. What I want you guys to do is to learn how did we actually looked at the circuit and immediately wrote this expression for the R out or R in or gain or stuff like that. If you know how to do it, you're good. If you don't know, you have to practice more and more and more until you actually see it. Otherwise, you're not gonna have time in the exam to draw the small signal circuit for this or for that, or like basically write KVLs and KCLs. Yeah, you might actually uh, have time to do it for one of them, but then well, the exam will be over by the time that you're done with one question, right? So you should be, for the exam, you should be able to see the resistor looking into, I don't know, collector or emitter or base of a transistor, uh, and then like if, if there is a resistor in the emitter or if there is a resistor in the base or collector um, and then how to actually write the expression uh, 
uh, the way that we wrote it here or in the other slides. Okay. In the end of this lecture, we're going to do a, a few more examples so that it, it becomes more and more clear for you guys. And then you have to do the assignments so that it actually uh, crystal clear, hopefully for you. Okay. We talked about the fact that common collectors are buffers. Well, let's see actually. And then we mentioned that the point of having a buffer is not to have gain. It's actually to be able to have a very low output impedance. Uh, in this example, I'm trying to actually show you why having a low output impedance is actually important. We have talked about this before when we first talked about input and output impedance, but it's actually good to see it in a real example. Let's say that uh, we have the speaker uh, thingy that we had before. So like we have an amplifier, let's say this is your microphone and this is a speaker and you're trying to amplify the signal at the microphone and play it on the speaker. And we're really representing speakers with just a simple resistor. And believe it or not, they are simple resistors. They're very small resistors though, right? So for example, we have an eight ohm resistor. If you actually go online and buy any speaker online, you will see that uh, the resistor is actually mentioned there. So like in the data sheet of the uh, speaker, it actually mentions what is the ohmic value of the uh, resistance or the speaker, okay? Now, uh, if I had a, just a common emitter amplifier like this one, right? What would have been the gain? So V out, let's say this is V out, right? The voltage across the speaker. This is the voltage that I care about, right? How much voltage I have across the speaker. So V out over V in would have been um, G, negative GM times whatever resistance I have at the collector, right? And that would have been RC in parallel with R speaker. Okay. And uh, just to get some idea about like the numbers, let's say that the transistor's beta is 100. It has a GM of, um, let's say 0.1, which means that R pi has to be a thousand ohms. Okay. Now, if the speaker wasn't connected to this, right? So like without the speaker, what would have been the gain? Like if there was no speaker here, then the V out, therefore like this would have been the V out, right? So this would have been the V out and V out over V in, I know that it would have been negative GM RC, right? Because that's the only resistance that I have in the collector. And then knowing that GM is 0.1 and RC is one kilo ohm, I would have had a gain of negative 100. So I would have amplified my signal by a factor of 100 and of course because of the negative sign i would have flipped it but that doesn't matter i would have amplified my signal by a factor of 100. how about now with this speaker i have negative 0.1 times the thousand ohm that i have there in parallel with eight eight in parallel with thousand is pretty much eight it's going to be eight thousand divided by uh thousand and eight so it's pretty much eight times 0.1, it's going to be negative 0.8. So not only I don't amplify to, to with a gain of 100, I actually attenuate my signal. So like if, if I connected my microphone to the speaker directly, I would have had a better performance than this amplifier. Okay, so this is awful. Now, what can I do about it? There's not much to be done. As I mentioned before, there's a th these common emitter amplifiers suffer from this trade-off between, well, input and output impedance, gain, power, and voltage headroom going to saturation, like AKA going to saturation, right? So now if I want to increase the gain, uh, does it really matter if I increase RC? Not really, because it's already pretty high. And because it's in parallel with that eight ohm, if I make this thousand ohm, 2000 ohm, do you think it's gonna happen? Like it's gonna matter? No, eight in parallel with thousand is like 7.99. 18 parallel with 1 million is going to be 7.999. So the gain is not going to be changing at all, at least with RC. So the only option that I have is to increase GM, right? And if I want to increase GM, I have to increase current because I know that GM is IC over VT. So VT is constant, so I have to increase current, which has power penalty. But even if I don't care about power, the moment I start increasing IC, the RC IC is going to increase. So the voltage across this guy is going to increase. At some point, it's going to push Q1 to saturation. So let's say even I, if I increase IC by a factor of, I don't know, by a factor of 10, right? Which is a huge power penalty. But let's say I'm okay with that. 
even if I do that, I might actually push my uh, push my transistor to saturation. But even if I even a current that is a, like ten times bigger, right, is not going to push my transistor to saturation. Still, I'm going to get a gain of eight, not a hundred. Okay. So like with 10 times more power consumption, with a high risk of going to saturation, and therefore no amplification, I get a gain of eight. So this is awful. Then this is why we need a buffer. So whenever you're loading, whenever your load is actually has this very small resistance, you definitely need a buffer. Okay. So let's see what happens with the buffer. So the gain of this stage, now I have a two stage amplifier, right? So I amplify V in. Uh, this first stage is a common emitter, so let's call this V midpoint. And then, so I have a VM over V in. And then from there, I have some, uh, let's call this V out. I'm going to have V out over VM, right? And then I'm going to find out what is the gain, okay? So first, let's find out what is VM over V in. So VM over V in is going to be, again, negative GM times whatever resistance that I have in the collector. What do I have at the collector? Well, looking at this, I have RC in parallel with this RN1 that I have mentioned here, right? So whatever I see into the base of Q2. But I've learned what how to calculate that. RN1 is equal to R pi plus whatever I have at the emitter times beta plus one. What do I have at the emitter? Well, in the small signal analysis, the current source is gone. This is a DC current source. The capacitor is short circuit, so I just see the eight ohm, so times eight. So I'm gonna have some decent resistance. So our pi is thousand, so thousand plus, let's say beta is hundred times eight, 800. So it's gonna be 1.8 kilo. Okay, therefore my Vm over V in is going to be 0.1 times um, RC in parallel with R in 1, which is 1K in parallel with 1.8K. So the combination of these two is going to be um, 1 times 1.8 divided by 2.8, so 18 over 28, 9 over 14, um, somewhere around 0 0.64 or 640, 640 ohms times 1.1, I'm going to get 64. Okay, so instead of a gain of 100, now I've got a gain of 64. That's that's a reduction, but not by a lot, right? That's that's still okay. Okay, now let's see what I can have uh, next. So for V out. I have V out over Vm. That's the next thing I have to calculate, right? And the gain for here is going to be beta plus one times whatever I have in the uh, in the emitter, which is the eight ohms, Re, basically, over beta plus one times eight plus R pi. Okay. So now I can say that this is 800 over 800 plus R pi. Okay. Now, the nice thing is that, by the way, this is GM1 and R pi 1, right? So it's, I'm only talking about the first transistor. For the second transistor, let's say that this is beta 1, this beta 2 is also 100, but then GM2 and R pi 2, it very much depends on I1. So GM2 and R pi 2 by association depend on I1, the value of this current source here, right? And I'm going to say, tell you in a moment, how do we set that? So now I know that my V out over Vm, or sorry, V in, is going to be this 800 over 800 plus R pi 2 times that 64 that I had from before. Okay. Now looking at this, the nice thing is that I have a very low output re resistance because, well, uh, the output resistance looking into the uh, for for a common collector is basically looking into its emitter is just one over GM, right? But what is it? The, what's the benefit of this low output resistance? Well, 
looking at this gain, I can see that I can choose this RPI to be small enough so that this gain is going to be almost one, the gain of the common collector stage. As you remember, we said that like we can actually set this gain to be as like very like it's going to be less than one, but it's going to be very we can set it to be very close to one, right? If I do that, then I can make sure that V out over V in is going to remain at 64. Therefore, I'm going to have a decent amount of gain here. Okay, so I'm not going to be increasing this current by a factor of like this current here by a factor of 10. I'm not going to be risking saturation. I'm not going to be doing anything. And uh, I can get a very good gain, like around 64. Let's say that like this is because this is somewhere around I don't know 0.9 something, uh, and I don't get 64. I get 60 or even 50, right? You get a good amplification with a common emitter. There was no way to win with this, right? There was no way to actually amplify the signal beyond the very very small gain, and even for that you had to pay a lot of power, a lot of cost in terms of power consumption. However, here all they need to do is to say, okay, I want a small RPI, and I know that GM RPI is going to be basically equal to beta, so I just need to make sure GM is pretty big, and GM is IC over VT, so I just sit, set the IC, which is basically set by this current source, I set this current source to have that GM, right? So basically by doing this, um, of course I'm paying, I'm having another stage here, so I'm paying extra power cost, but at least with that extra power cost, I'm going to get the gain that I wanted, right? So the gain that I get at the output is going to be uh, like somewhere around 50, 60 or something like that, right? So the point of having a common collector is that generally, uh, whenever you have a load that is small, you really need to actually have a common collector at the last stage before connecting to that load so that you buffer the amplified signal to that without the load affecting your gain. Because if you connect the amplifi amplification gain directly to the load as we have it here, then that load is gonna be in parallel with your RC and then it's gonna kill your gain. You're, you're not gonna get any gain out of this thing. But then if you actually, like this collector is really, really the, like you can see the definition of buffer. You have your amplifier here, you have your load here, and this buffer stage is really buffering uh, from here to here. So it's basically copying the voltage from here to here, and then it doesn't let the load to see your amplifier and to ruin your amplifier's gain. So the last thing I, I wanted to talk about is the biasing of common collector stages. Um, there's nothing to talk about. It's just that I wanted to mention that it's exactly like what we do with common emitter stage. So like there's nothing new about it because uh, as you can see, we, we can either do it using this, this single RP, using simple biasing, or using this uh, resistive divider. But at the end of the day, uh, since the input is at the base, we do exactly what we did with common emitter. And all the discussions that we had for the biasing of common emitter stage applies to here as well.